I work uh, in the northwestern Maya lowland and uh, specifically in the Palenque region as I am part of the Palenque regional project. Uh, but uh, as we already saw two brown bags on the Palenque regional project, uh, one by Esteban Miron Marvan and the other by Flavio Silva de la Mora. Today, I decided to present you the result of the architectural analysis I have been conducting uh, in the central Maya lowland uh, in southern Mexico and actually in the state uh, of Campeche. In 2014, uh, I was called to map a site, so I joined the archaeological reconnaissance uh, in southeastern Campeche project, which is directed by Dr. Ivan Sprach of the Slovenian Academy of Art uh, and Science. Since uh, 1996, uh, Ivan and his team uh, have been surveying the south part uh, of the Kalakmul Biosphere Reserve uh, that you can see here in red. That is a natural protected area where they reported uh, dozens uh, of previously unknown sites. Besides, they relocated most of the settlement registered in the 40s by Carl Rupert and John Dennison. Rupert and Denison surveyed the area during the first half uh, of the 20th century for the Carnegie Institution of Washington, and after the 1941 publication of the archaeological reconnaissance in Campeche, Quintana Roo, and Petén, most of the sites they reported were completely lost. Sprach's project uh, showed the great density of archaeological sites, uh, as you can see here, that surround the area of the biggest site of uh, Calakmul comparable with other places of the Maya area. He reported the presence of major unknown centers with huge architectural complexes, inscriptions, and monuments. Furthermore, he provided data on their settlement pattern with respect to the environment, hierarchy, and political and territorial organization. After his report, almost three projects started in the Peten Campechano, as this area is known, so the project Oshpemul by the University of Campeche, the Ushul project by the University of Bonn, which uh, ended last year, and the Yashnoka project of the University of Calgary. But Ivan generally doesn't excavate. He conducts a survey in order to fill the gap of the archaeological map of the Maya area. Here, in yellow, it is noticeable the complete absence of settlement in a region which uh, had to have an important role in the political and commercial activities in pre-Hispanic times, as it represents the center of the peninsula of Yucatan. This empty area is located between the region known as Riobek, Chenes, and Puc. This is the Chenes region, the Riobek region, and the Puc region. And uh, uh, so this area is uh, in the center of the Riobek, Chenes, and Puc region that are characterized mainly by their architectural styles and constructive technique, and which also share some common decorative tradition. So in red, I have indicated the new area surveyed since 2013 by the Archaeological Reconnaissance in Southeastern Campeche project. This close-up of the map uh, compiled by, George, by Paul Gendrop uh, indicates the distribution of some stylistic features typical of the Chenes and Riobek regions, where the settlements are generally composed by small architectural groups, a limited number uh, of buildings, uh, and by the absence of pyramidal structure. Besides, they present a low number of stele and monuments. In terms of environmental condition, if we take a look uh, at the zone occupied by the Calakmul Biosphere Reserve, uh, that uh, is this uh, green one, uh, we will find a thick jungle layer of vegetation, uh, which is higher in the south of the biosphere, while it comes, becomes lower and more tangled going north. There are no rivers in the surface, but seasonal reservoirs, or uh, aguadas, uh, sunk in floodable areas, sometimes uh, seasonal or perennial lagoons. So this is the Federal Highway 186 that cut uh, the peninsula of Yucatan from east to west, and it constitutes also a kind of uh, frontier. It uh, separated the Calakmul Biosphere Reserve 
in two parts. And uh, while the previous surveys of Ivan were in this part uh, of the reserve, uh, in 2013, Ivan and his team discovered the big Maya city of Chaktun uh, in the northern part of the reserve, thanks to aerial photos and to stereoscopy. It took three weeks uh, to open an old timber path uh, and reach the site. So I will introduce bi briefly the settlement documented in this area, that are only three, as they provide us uh, with the only available information. Chaktun is characterized by very large and massive building and by a big hieroglyphic corpus not common for the region. According to the analysis of the ceramic material recovered in the surface, it was occupied since preclassic time, but its apogee was in the late classic period, around the 7th and 8th centuries. There is also evidence of scattered post-classic occupation. Even if, it, even if uh, Chaktun is close to the Ryobek region, it seems more aligned with the Petain tradition in terms of urban and architectural characteristics, as its structures are organized around several plazas surrounded by pyramids and temples, palace complexes and several structures. Two ball game were documented along, the, along with a reservoir with a rectangular shape. Furthermore, it, uh, it has the biggest complex of inscription known for the region, with 20 stele and 15 altars with peculiar monuments covered by stucco. Tamchen was found six kilometers southeast of Chaktun. Its name means Poso Profundo, or Deep Well, for the presence of, 24 of uh, 34 registered chultuns, which are artificial wells to collect the rain water. So here I put, uh, for example, the photo of the entrance of the mouth of a chultun with a schematic uh, uh, section. So you can see, uh, well, all the chaktun, uh, chultunes uh, have this uh, form of uh, like big bottle. Some of the chultun are 14 meters deep. Even if the chultunes are found everywhere in the Maya area, their concentration in the civic ceremonial core is peculiar. It is composed of several architectural groups organized around open spaces. The more formal is the central group, where the central plaza is in the highest position, here. The arrangement of its building resembles Lagunitas urban composition. Nevertheless, no architectural elements aligning to the Rio Back region were found. So along with Tan Chen, in 2014, uh, Lagunita was found and I was called to map it. The site is located seven kilometers southeast from uh, Tan Chen, almost uh, southwest, sorry, of Tan Chen, almost one and a half kilometers from what it looks like a perennial lagoon, maybe the same that gave the name to the site. The main objective, uh, was to map the settlement and document its main feature. Topographical measurements were made with a total station and with the use of transects with the machete, the machete in order to model the terrain. So we are in, in a natural reserve, so we couldn't cut uh, almost anything. It is important to mention that we are not talking of isolated sites with huge construction but that we saw several minor architectural compounds all around the settlement, but it was not possible to register them because of the available time. The buildings of Lagunita are in a regular state of preservation, and luckily not major looter trenches were reported, as it happens for other Petén sites. Lagunita is organized around three well-defined groups, Group A and C, are on top of natural elevation, which were artificially modified to give place to big open spaces, while group B is in the plain. Again, in terms of urban planning, it is dissimilar from the Ryobek sites, which have smallest, archi smallest architectural groups, a limited number of buildings, and where generally, instead of pyramids, uh, fake tower complexes were built. The ceramic analysis carried out by Joseph Ball on the material collected on the surface shows that the occupation of Lagunita dates back to the middle preclassic period, but its apogee was during the late classic period, when probably most of the constructive effort was carried out. This moment was followed by a demographic decline with occasional activities, 
and an inconstant occupation in the post-classic period, as we already mentioned for Chaktun and Tamchen. Group A is the main complex of Lagunita in terms of number of buildings and their architectural features. It resembles the southeast portion of Tamchen main group, as its central and west plazas are similar in terms of building arrangement around two open spaces and because of their architectural characteristic. The structure of the central plaza stands out for their constructive volume, while the structures which define the west plazas for their distinctive architectural and decorative characteristics. Their arrangement uh, appears as the result of an, additional, of an addition to a previous urban plan, not only because there is a small difference in the plaza levels, but also because the buildings seem to establish a new urban front. This is confirmed by the position of a gigantic serpent mount facade, one of the main features of Lagunita that you can see here, can see here and this is, that is uh, this facade looking west. That was built at the center of the west side of structure A7, facing toward west outside of group A. We will see it uh, in detail uh, in a while. Building A6, uh, that is this one, along with structure A7 and A8, allows to observe some of the decorative and constructive features which characterize Lagunita's building. From the topographical information, along with the architectural evidence, we were able to measure and establish at least the ground floor plan of building A6. This is a massive structure which had, judging from its visible remain, a three-room wide ground floor plan. Above this chamber, we observed the vaulted room a couple of meters long, transversal to the building main north-south axis. On top of this chamber, there is still a lot of constructive material. This is why we assume that A6 was at least a three-story build three building. Some of the ground floor rooms uh, are still well preserved, and it was possible to make their photographic and architectural record through trilateration. In room one, the masonry, mm -hmm, this is room one, well, it can, you can't read it uh, very well, the masonry and the rest of the stucco which cover the wall can still be appreciated. Furthermore, on both sides of the entrance, we measure two small niches that you can see here. Hmm? On the south wall, a large vertical crack, this one, testifies the future collapse of the superior remains and uh, as a consequence of these vaulted rooms. From room one through a narrow passageway, it is possible from this door, this is the passageway uh, that you can see here in the map. It is possible to enter the well-preserved room two, which floor was broken by looters. It has an almost square floor plan. The wood lintel between the two rooms uh, is worth to notice. You can see it here, as it is still standing beside a huge longitudinal break. According to the local workers, it looked like a Sirikote wood. Structure A8, not from the zoomorphic facade in this position, is characterized for the many sculpted stones found in its north and west slope. Some of these uh, look like almenas, but after consulting the available information, almenas are the sculpted stone that generally decorate the upper part of Maya build uh, of buildings. But after consulting the available information, we realize uh, that uh, others, uh, as this one, uh, constitute the lower decoration of checkboard and cross panels, uh, which are uh, vertical placed plates uh, distinctive uh, of the decoration of buildings uh, of the Riobec uh, region. Group B's location with respect to the main compound, Group A, is comparable with the position of Tamchen's southwest group. However, at Lagunita, Group B has a great number of buildings. This presents a considerable amount of constructive volume, though so the mounts developed mostly in land as the group was erected in the plain, without the possibility of taking advantage of the topography to build higher construction. Also, the form of the structure is often irregular, and the orientation of the group is dissimilar from the other two of Lagunita. 
As mentioned before, group B looks like the result of a series of different constructive phases which contribute to give an irregular shape to the plaza limit. Nonetheless, it has the biggest open space of the settlement, with an area of more than 5,000 square meters. Several monuments were found in the plaza. Structure B1's main stair faced the southern entrance of Group A toward the large basal platform and the monumental stair that is indicated here with this uh, arrow, where the greatest number of stele of the settlement was found. I think that the dialogue which is established between groups uh, throughout the building's orientation can be the result of a planning project which aims uh, to create a unification within the architectural compound. Beside the small amount of building uh, with respect to the other groups of Lagunita, in Group C is located the only pyramid of the settlement. This complex gives the impression of a great acropolis as it is situated on a natural elevation that was modified on two consecutive plaza that you can appreciate here following an art south axis. It resembled the arrangement of the buildings of Tamchen North Plaza. Structure A2 and C3 are again here in a dialogical position as they face each other thanks to their frontal stairway. On both sides, this gives access to a basal platform that leads on an elongated open space between the groups and the halfway of this sunken area, 88, uh, 88 meters wide, we register the even stele 9 and 10 hmm? in this position. You can see it here in the map too. Structure C1 is located on the north side of group C and the rise of 13 meters on the plaza level. In its north side, it is still possible to appreciate the masonry which characterizes its front. In its lower section, it is composed of small carved stone which ended on medial molding of well-carved slabs. A completed jar with a hole uh, at the bottom, an intentional or, or as we say, uh, an intentional killing, was found in the north slope uh, of the group at foot of C1. So after describing uh, the urban and architectural characteristic uh, of Lagunita and uh, its surrounding area, and in order to reflect, on its, to reflect on its location in its broader surrounding uh, area, it is important to mention that the zoomorphic facade is a very distinctive architectural element, which is also present in several settlements of the region. In the 80s, a preliminary framework of the evolutionary sequence of Maya architecture for the peninsula of Yucatan was proposed by George Andrews and Paul Gendrop. for the stylistic regions of Riobec, Chenes, and Puc. Here, we can appreciate a close up of the Riobec and Chenes region, and in red, the area where Chactun, Tamchen, and Lagunita are located. So Lagunita is situated in the transitional area between the lowland Maya regions of Riobec and Chenes, both of them are characterized by the reiterative presence of zoomorphic or teratomorphic, that means monster shape facade, in their building. Generally, in the Riobec region, the large zoomorphic mass around door, mask around doorways or its partial representation are associated with ornamental massive tower or buttresses, while in the Chenes region, they are similarly found in low building of tripartite floor plan. This means a central structure with two wings, uh, but without associated tower complexes. Besides, uh, distinctive traits are present all around, uh, and that site at Zibilnokak and Tabasqueño. Here you can see Tabasqueño, they are located here. In the Chenes region, the temple type building was erected in the middle of an elongated construction. Lagunita somorphic facade was previously reported by Eric von Eun in 1917 when he visited the site. So we rediscovered the site, actually. The partial drawing of the facade, along with some sketches of the three, of three stele, are conserved in the archive of the Peabody Museum of Archaeology and Ethnology of Harvard University. 
After consulting this drawing, uh, the Austrian explorer Karl Herbert Mayer tried to reach Lagunita in several occasions, but without any success. The story of the previous discovery of Lagunita is confused and quite a mystery, but at least uh, we relocated it. The subject represented in the somorphic facade is not new. The main doorway symbolizes a gaping mouth with teeth and fangs, which recalls a cave entrance rim with stalactites and stalagmites. This metaphor of the cave is prevalent in Mesoamerican art from the preclassic period. Caves are considered to be underworld, sources of water where maize was first found. The building will then represent uh, an artificial mountain, or wits, in classic Maya, whose animated version has a prominent and elongated upper jaw, visually incorporated in a frontal and in a profile view. It has reptilian and ophidian characteristic, uh, as the entrance of the cave uh, is the mouth of the cosmic monster, or Kawak, which links the superposed level of the universe. So the facade will be a mountain monster, where the door is the mouth of the cave. In the central Maya lowland, the representation of the mountain monster become extraordinarily sophisticated and elaborated. In the Ryobek, Chene, and Chenes regions, uh, the entire facade is treated as a great monster head uh, with the door as its mouth. People entering this building appear to be walking in the gullet of the monster. Most of the stone mosaic relief of Lagunita's facade can still be appreciated. So here uh, we can see a part uh, of the southeast uh, facade of Lagunita. Some of the fangs uh, are still uh, visible. And uh, the globular eyes of the monster, where uh, luckily we still have uh, a wood lintel in here. And this will be the spiral eye of the monster seen uh, in profile, mm -hmm. this view. We completely lost uh, the upper lintel uh, where the frontal face of the monster, monster would have been visible. Mm -hmm. You can see here the uh, north uh, wall uh, of the facade. So we documented uh, the facade of Lagunita thanks to the use of photogrammetry which permit the generation of a digital model using a G-soft photo scan. This was obtained uh, with the overlapping of the orthogonal and oblique pictures taken in the field. Such method allows us to register the architectural details of the serpentine mask uh, that are still visible in situ and which are subject to an inevitable process of deterioration and loss. The digital model, along with measurement uh, and sketches realized in the field, uh, constituted the base to draw the facade and overlap it to the archaeological map. According to the classification of Paul Gendrop, the facade of Lagunita is integral, as it is constituted by a frontal mask, uh, which is flanked by a cascade of profi profile mask mm, that you can see here and here, in low or high relief. The entire front wall of the building uh, is the head of the earth monster. So on both sides of the door jumps, open jaws seem to close around the door and give the composition a monstrous appearing. Adjacent to the gums, a combined profile view of the eye. So here I put the facade of uh, Ormiguero, so you can have an idea on uh, the part uh, we have lost uh, with the fallen of the main lintel of the door. So here we can see the frontal uh, eyes of the monster with the teeth uh, and then the door opening and here we see the globular spiral eyes uh, of the profile of the monster with the, his halid uh, and the supraorbital plate. Adjacent to the guns, a combined view, a combined profile view of the eye and forehead uh, is always present and above the front vision of the head. Thanks to the iconographic studies conducted by Paul Gendrop, we can recognize the decorative elements of the zoomorphic facade and uh, identify some peculiarities, as the scales or flakes that decorate the serpentine jaws in profile that are, represent, are represented by a circle with a central point. A similar motif can be observed also in the superorbital plate 
It is constituted by three aligned circles, each with inside the three aligned point. According to Baudet, this can uh, correspond to symbol of water, of water drop and jade, which are characteristic of the earth monster Kawak. Because generally in this part uh, we found uh, this uh, X, uh, this cross uh, that is called the cross uh, of uh, San Andrew. The same form of a supraorbital plate uh, with three circles is actually found uh, upside down in the stone mosaics uh, known as Chuck Mask uh, of Puk uh, architecture. In terms of urban location, if we take a look uh, at uh, other settlement of the Riobec and Chenes area, we will see that the facade with monster mask on elongated or tripartite buildings generally have their front on an inner patio, while the temple building of one room is mostly isolated. At Lagunita, there are some peculiarities in terms of location of the zoomorphic facade as it faces toward west, outside of the group. The facade probably indicated the main entrance uh, to the civic ceremonial core of the settlement. Two level open spaces, uh, we, you can see here, uh, well, one of the ideas I have uh, on uh, basing on topography uh, of the dimension of the first uh, uh, platform, and this will be the second one. Uh, where several monuments were documented, conducted to the central stairway that ascend from the plain. Because of the vegetation, it was not possible to entire follow the limits of these two platforms. Nevertheless, uh, we documented the northwest corner of the broadest one, which starts uh, on one side of the ball court. Furthermore, the facade is located on an elevated posi position, which is uncommon for the building that displayed this kind of decoration. Besides, uh, the room behind the facade uh, is about uh, five, this room, uh, 5.5 meters between the interior door jumps. It, it, uh, it is extremely wide uh, to be vaulted, and I am wondering if we have to think at the perishable roof covering the chamber. At the first side, site, in fact, there is no sign of an inner media wall which could have defined two rooms. Perhaps uh, we have to think uh, on a freestanding uh, wall uh, as it happens at Santa Rosa Stampac, uh, where the facade is a scenario for the rear building. Furthermore, the cascade of masks that flank the facade are partially covered by other attached structures whose formal features resemble the ground wall of the ornamental towers uh, that characterize the Rio Beck region, which always have rounded corners and which stand uh, like pylons flanking the central entrance. Hormiguero Building 2 is the most similar construction in terms of dimension in high and with regarding to the proportion of the tower buildings. Uh, if we skip the particularity that the size of the central door of Lagunita is very wide if compared to any other sites of the area, as it reaches 3.25 meters. As our site doesn't have a tripartite or elongate building which hosts uh, the serpentine mouth of, mouth of the facade, before attempting a reconstruction, I consulted the available maps uh, of the typical Riobeck tower complexes with only one central building flanked by towers. Actually, Riobeck B structure one is similar to Lagunita SA7 in terms of ground plan even if this tower complex does not have a serpent mount facade. The height of the towers uh, <coughs> of building A7 is according to Hormigueros building 2. The ground floor size depends on the mounts measured with topography on the side of the, the zoomorphic facade. So this is uh, the proposal restored view of the facade of Lagunita. It looks peculiar, how structure A7 and its associate zoomorphic facade seem to merge different architectural features of building type association registered toward the Rio Beck region. On a one-story building that stands on a high platform, or which is not possible at the present time, to determine the number of interior rooms, uh, we find the remains of a probably two towers in a typical Riobeck tower complex's disposition, added and partially covering the cascade of profile mask, uh, 
So here I don't know if it is well visible in this shaded view. The facade of Lagunita will be here, and uh, you can perceive uh, uh, maybe uh, this is uh, the mount. These are the mounts occupied by the fake towers. And also, I feel or I believe that the building A6 and uh, A8 constitutes a kind of uh, wings, uh, even on a different plane. All these architectural features, along with the urban analysis proposed uh, in this presentation, are meant to try to position Lagunita in its broader surrounding area. While at Chak Tun or Tam Chen, there were no architectural or decorative evidence uh, which could have placed them in the Rio Bec or Chenes region, Lagunita represents an exception as it combines some Petén attributes already recognized for its neighboring sites with the architectural and stylistic tradition of the Rio Bec and Chenes region. It is unlikely that an archaeological project will start at Lagunita, and we can say that at least we have underlined maybe the only available basis for its comparison and contextualization, as this is the first known settlement in a huge unsurveyed area for which such architectural and stylistic qualities are reported. Thank you. Yes. For the facade mask. 
those two things seem to me to be potentially interpretable together. Yes, yes, for sure. And also, well, one other thing is that um, the standard information that we have learned from uh, the hieroglyphic analysis mm -hmm. is that there is no mention at all of the Khan uh, dynasty, even if we are really close. And it looks like uh, there is a completely cut from the southern tradition of the things that we saw like in the southern part of the Petan Campechano. And so, we are working on that. Yes. Yeah, but that's, that's one of those interesting things. I guess the other question I have for you, and I don't want to cut off other people. So you're showing that this is like a hybrid architecturally, yeah. um, that they're drawing together these different kinds of architectural elements yes. that have usually been seen as somehow programmatically representative of, a, of an identity. Yes. And I really like the fact that what you have does breaks that. Yes. Because it allows us to step back and instead of saying that Chen is an identity or real life is an identity, to say what kind of meaning is being created here that's that's um, kind of joy. Well and that is distinctive in yeah. this region, right? It's distinctive but at the same time uh, it is like a, a, like assuming, no? Or like right. converging the all these Right, but it makes connections and differences yeah. at the same time. Yes. And we have a tendency to treat the, the sort of material um, sort of record as if it should parallel to the textual record. Yeah. There's no real reason to think that. Because the historical texts are about the dynasties. Yes. And this architectural elaboration goes beyond that. Yes. It's really about bringing people together. Yes. And also starting what? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. also starting to. Uh, I don't know, let's see what happens in the Sorotic area, but uh, I'm really curious about it also because uh, Chapun and Tamchen don't uh, have a door, well, not a physical uh, analysis, of course. Uh, you go back to China's uh, kind of basic uh, architecture. Yeah. And La Bonita will be also the first uh, site uh, with the tower building, uh, right. and the pattern later, that they will be later than the facade. So it is uh, hopefully someone with uh, Start the project there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very nice. What is what projected further? Work here? What's is there further work projected here? What what is going to be? Um, is there plans? For... But we are thinking about uh, going to the field next year just to uh, check the sites that uh, can be uh, revealed uh, mm -hmm. thanks to the leader photograph mm -hmm. analysis. And uh, but uh, Ivan just report all the sites and then uh, every yeah. you know, explorer or archaeologist that wants to have a project, it is uh, almost yeah. free to do that. But no one, it is really difficult in terms of logistics yeah. and so on. So, first off, it's fantastic. I hope you'll forgive my multiple and overlapping layers of ignorance um, when I ask these follow on questions. But part of it has to do with what Rosemary was asking yeah. about it. And I'm wondering, assuming that the ball courts and the activities at those ball courts um, were being observed or some way participated in by a cross-section of people, potentially, mm -hmm. right? Not just one particular status of people. Mm -hmm. Is that true? I, I don't it's know. possible. It's okay. possible. So, so if, if it goes that way, assuming that more people could be in the vicinity of the ball court than could be going through, the big facade with the mouth and everything going on there, right? Mm -hmm. Are, is, is, this, is this complicating us? Is that potential alignment and new a way of looking at this, this way of, of laying out space? Mm -hmm. Is that complicating any narratives that are kind of more popular about who is supposed to be impressed by this or who's supposed to be participating in different performances of identity? I mean, is that something that um, through an event, because the ball games are events, kind of comes back, kind of with cyclical hits on who's supposed to be participating in and seeing this facade as part of local identity versus regional identity versus. Well, generally, we think uh, on the assistance to the ball game uh, or the like uh, entering the facade, like uh, kind of a street uh, action, no? Sure. So the facade is actually linked to a wide open space where people can uh, congregate actually in uh, some uh, specific location and uh, see what was happening uh, on top of the building, but probably not uh, in the middle. So, but the ball game, the ball court is right there. Yes, the ball court is right there, and it is a kind of actually a scene of the building. So one so, of the, yeah. Yes. So the thing that 
happens by bringing the bulk words out, out. is yes, that, that they can be more visible yeah, or participating. Mm -hmm. yeah. yes. But it's also kind of scheduled as to where this is happening in ways. Rather than just kind of happenstance people wandering by or going through a procession, procession there's these ball games on top of that, right? So it's, it's amplifying that interaction with that visibility in ways that are more metered. Right. Yes. Yes. That could be, I don't know, just to me, if I saw a ball court, there's a few ball courts we have in the American Southwest, right? Yeah. If we saw a ball court suddenly in a specific place in, in front of you know, these great houses, these great Pueblo houses, I'd be like, wait a minute, they're intentionally Second. ramping up the number of interactions the general populace has. And in other my sites too, they are almost in the center of the Thank you for your thank you. 